Side Story 1, Visiting New In-Laws, 1. Su Jian laid beside the cradle. He had been trying to control himself. However, he couldn't help himself and ultimately pinched the baby's face. Mother and said that it's not good to pinch a baby's face too much. However, the baby in front of him was so white and plum, like a glutinous rice dumpling. The baby was just too cute, especially that small face of hers which was chubby and tender. Therefore, although the unreliable mother Sujian knew that pinching a baby's face wasn't good, he couldn't help but stretch out his sinful hands. What good texture, so smooth, so tender, so soft and so q1. Unable to control himself, Sujian pinched the face, again, and again, the baby pursed her small lips and her mouth slowly opened. What? Su Jian got a shock and quickly took his hand back. Hearing the sound of footsteps, he quickly stood up straight and put on a suitable expression. With furrowed brows, he said worriedly to an Yaz who came in quickly. Ah, for some reason, the baby suddenly started crying. Yaz, quickly come and take a look. An Yaz skillfully picked the baby up out of her cradle. While coaxing the baby, he said, perhaps she's hungry? Su Jian busily nodded, yes, I'm sure she must be hungry. I'll go prepare the milk. The baby was already five months old. The child grew quickly and her appearance quickly changed. Su Jian watched as the little monkey grew up like a balloon being inflated into the beautiful white jade that everyone loved. He couldn't help but feel the mystery of the divine force which created the universe. However, when he finished giving birth, he didn't produce much milk. Mother unused all sorts of way, even inviting experts in prolactin too, but to no avail. Mother An was very depressed. Nevertheless, Su Jian couldn't help but felt a little happy. Although he felt apologetic to his baby, he felt embarrassed and strange having to breastfeed since he was once a man. The baby's arrival was not within Su Jian's expectations. However, it was a great surprise to the Un family. Just the naming of the child needed a long discussion. In order to give the baby a good name, father and specially visited his old friend who was a university professor. Mother and invited a very experienced master, and An Yiru excitedly flipped through the whole book of Tang and Song poetry anthology. Seeing such excessive actions, Su Jian who was lying in an Yaz's embrace at night couldn't help but sigh, isn't it just thinking of a name, is there a need for such a ruckus, an Yaz lowered his eyes to look at him, his eyes showing laughter, with a gentle voice, he asked, what about you, Jian Jian, this child is ours, have you thought of naming her yourself, Su Jian thought for a moment and said, they say it is easy to raise a child if it has a cheap name. Why don't we call her in Baekai 3? An Yaz. Seeing An Yaz's terrible expression, Su Jian laughed awkwardly and said, It's just a joke. Of course I'm joking. How could I give my child such a name? An Yaz's expression became slightly warmer. Baekai cabbage is too ordinary. Our daughter is at least as I hong shi tomato. As the saying goes, the rarer something is, the more precious it is. Ha ha ha. Seeing An Yaz's displeased expression, Su Jian stopped laughing and said, Okay, okay, I'll be serious. I feel that our daughter should be called An Ran for. An Ran? Yes. Calm and peaceful, in hope that she lives a smooth and peaceful life. Okay, let's call her An Ran. It was settled so easily. An Yaz laughed and kissed Su Jian's forehead. I will talk it out with father and mother. After Su Jian finished preparing the milk, he carried the milk bottle back into the room. Seeing his daughter lying obediently in An Yaz's embrace, Su Jian couldn't help but feel jealous. However, he had no right to complain. After all, even though he was the one who gave birth, he hadn't really taken much part in the upbringing of the baby. Ever since the baby was born, she had been taken care of by the professional nanny and mother and even An Yaz had taken care of the baby more than Su Jian did. As for him, his main role as a mother was to bring the child to, uck, play. Actually, Su Jian was initially ambitious to take care of his next generation. After all, he would be raising a lily into something. It sounded moving. However, when he started raising this extra mini lily for a few days, he realized that it wasn't anything like what he had imagined. Raising a child was really too hard. On the contrary, An Yaz didn't seem troubled at all. Ever since the baby was born, something in President and seemed to have awakened. To an outsider, he still looked mature, 
cold and elite. However, once he faced the baby, his image changed completely. There were quite a few times when Su Jian woke up in the middle of the night and saw An Yai's squatting beside the cradle, looking at the baby sleep. An Yai's expression was so gentle, Su Jian didn't know how to describe how he felt. Seeing the previously crying baby lying in An Yai's embrace very obediently, Su Jian lamented sourly, I've heard that daughters are their father's lover in their past life. Looks like it's true. An Yaz laughed as he received the milk bottle. Su Jian sat at the side, supporting his face with his hand as he watched An Yaz feed the child. He said, if we followed that saying, wouldn't I become your daughter in our next life? An Yaz's hand which was feeding the baby trembled. Su Jian excitedly continued, actually. It doesn't seem bad being your daughter. I can tell in a glance that you're really cut out for fatherhood. Now that we mention about it, I really couldn't tell in the past. To think that you like children so much. An uh, Yaz replied indifferently, that's not true. Su Jian was stunned. What? An uh, Yaz didn't look at him. While feeding the baby, he replied calmly, it's just that she is our child. Su Jian was first stunned. Before falling into silence, Yai's Su Jian leaned forward and quickly planted a kiss on Yai's face as he looked up. Then, as if nothing happened, he turned around. Take good care of our child. I will go and browse the web. Dot. Su Jian habitually called his home phone. This card was specially prepared by him, used for calling back his home landline. After Father Su or Mother Su picked up and he heard their voice, he would hurriedly say sorry. I've dialed the wrong number, before hanging up the phone, feeling rest assured. He knew that this act was childish. However, he couldn't think of a better way. When he was first reborn, he didn't dare to confess to his parents immediately due to his relationship with An Yai's. After finding out that he and An Yai's marriage was just part of a contract, he had decided to wait for a year to pass. Once their relationship ended, he would go back to his family. At least An Yaz wasn't by his side and Sister Sue's family was far away, lessening the trouble. During that one year period, there were times he secretly called home. Every time he heard his parents' voice, he felt terrible and guilty. Afterward, when his leg healed, he had secretly went back to visit his neighborhood. Although he had heard his parents' calm and steady voice through the phone and had learned about his parents' well-being through Suji. Su Jian only felt reassured after seeing his parents looking healthy physically and mentally with his own eyes. However, he hadn't expect his relationship with An Yaz to become more and more complex. Now, they even had a child. His initial plan to leave An Yaz and go back to his parents can no longer be used. After all, with An Yaz's brain, he would most likely be able to deduce that Su Jian wasn't the real sister Su. At this point, he wasn't that worried that An Yai's would fall out with him if he found out that Su Jian had been reborn. However, Su Jian wasn't confident whether An Yai's would accept him knowing he was a man. If it was in the past, he wouldn't be scared no matter how much An Yai's hated him. He couldn't ask for more if An Yai's wanted to divorce. But now, he would definitely not give up on his parents. But as for An Yai's and his child, he couldn't bear it either. Hugging his head, Su Jian rolled around on the sofa, is there really no way that can kill two birds with one stone? Ah, Jian Jian? An Yaz came in and saw Su Jian lying on the sofa with a dark face looking like there is no more meaning in life. He asked, what's wrong? Su Jian looked at him with perplexed eyes and asked, Yaz, what if, just what if, one day you realized that I wasn't like what you thought? What I'm saying is, what if you found out that I had another side of me? Would you be able to accept me? An uh, Yaz asked with raised brows. What side of you? Su Jian replied in a stutter. Uck. For example, a not so feminine side. An uh, Yaz looked at him quietly for two seconds, before replying calmly, Have you ever had a feminine side? Su Jian. An uh, Yaz suddenly had to make a trip back to the office. Before he left, he lowered his head to kiss the face of the baby who was in Su Jian's embrace. Then, he naturally planted a kiss on Su Jian's face. He then left the house. Coming back home during the holidays, An Yira who was close by saw this scene and lamented, Third sister-in-law, I'm suddenly a little envious of you. Su Jian carried the baby and went to sit beside her. What are you envious for? An Yiru answered, for having such a good husband like third brother. Su Jian laughed, 
Are you finding ways to praise your brother? And Yeru replied, I'm not purposely trying to praise third brother. I really feel that ever since we had Ranran, third brother has become increasingly gentle. Sujian pouted and said, I couldn't tell. And Yeru was about to justify her words when she heard Sujian continued, Wasn't he like this since before? And Yeru said, Third sister in law, I'm suddenly very envious of you. Sujian laughed, what is there to be envious of? Your future husband will definitely be better than your brother. And Yeru's eyes moved and a sweet smile slowly appeared. She suddenly stood up and said, Third sister-in-law, please help me. After saying that, she went to her room to take out two items. Between these two, which do you think is a better birthday gift for a man? Sujian looked at the brand name wallet and wool scarf placed before him. He asked with a smile. For your boyfriend, and Yeru didn't shy away and instead answered Sujian openly, he's not officially my boyfriend yet. However, he will definitely be in the future. You know him too. He's Suji, who previously sang with us. Third sister-in-law, do you still remember? Sujian was stunned. Suji, N, the one that was tall, handsome, and sang Jackie Chung's song especially well. Sujian controlled the shock in his heart and slowly said, You like him? That's right. Speaking of the person she liked, and Yeru eyes immediately brighten. Her mouth couldn't help but went on. He's attractive, handsome, of course. His older brother is so handsome, how could the younger brother look bad? Sujian suppressed his laugh and said, Xiaoru, you're repeating your compliments. And Yeru was a little embarrassed as she continued, he's not just handsome, he's also a good person. He's very good at studies always getting the first-class scholarship in the department. Sujian felt honored. His younger brother who had the same blood flowing in him wouldn't have a bad head. He has a good character. Previously, he did a righteous act. He dived into water to save someone. Dived into water to save someone? A trace of concern was mixed in Sujian's voice as he asked, Is he fine? Of course he's fine. The person that was saved is also fine. Afterward, the person specially wrote a letter of gratitude to the school. And Yeru continued with a proud tone, Also, his character is good. He is calm and wise, but treats his friends warmly. Little sis true. Do you know the calm and wise man you mentioned loved to cry a lot in the past? Recalling Suji's crying appearance when he bullied him in the past, Sujian's mood couldn't help but improve. When Sujian came back to his sense, Anyira had mentioned another bunch of Suji's strengths. Dot there are many girls that like him in school. This proves that he really is good. Sujian felt a little unhappy. That Brett and I are clearly brothers. Why is our treatment from the opposite sex so different? However, even now, he still doesn't have a girlfriend. This made me like him more. Anyiru concluded. Sujian asked in confusion, why? Anyiru smiled widely and replied, this shows that that position is left for me. Sujian was suddenly jealous of his own younger brother. Why didn't I meet a girl like her that has pale skin, rich, beautiful and cute? If that brat and sister and marries, then my own parents and the end parents will become relatives by marriage. If that happens, it not that unacceptable if I became close with my parents. Thinking up to this point. Sujian immediately decided that he will fully support sister and to get his own younger brother. Sujian looked at the scarf which was simple in color. At the corner, there was a flaw which wasn't that noticeable, showing that the scarf was obviously made by an Yiru. Thinking about his younger brother's preference, he said, Gift the scarf. I feel that guys will like that more. Is that so? An Yiru's eyes brightened as she continued, Then let's settle with this. Looking like a love tutor. Sujian continued, based on my experience of judging people for many years, a brat. Guy like Suji probably likes girls with long hair and a serious and benevolent character. N, he's sure of his memories. Back then, the brat had always crushed on this type of girls. And Yiru asked with pleasant surprise, what else? Sujian sold out his brother's information with no hesitation. I remember chatting with him for a bit that day. Based on my life experience and my understanding of him, I feel that the books he like are usually about science or history. For movies and television shows, he likes action, drama shows. He probably likes playing Warcraft and likes Transformers. For guys like this, 
He usually preferred eating spicy food. He doesn't like coriander but likes eating durian. He has two swirls on his head. Tuck, this is just my guess. Third sister in law, what you guessed is so accurate. Anyuru looked at him in admiration as she continued, I've noticed that he does have two swirls on his head. Sujian lightly coughed, Xiaoru, if you like him, go get him, I'll support you. Thank you, third sister-in-law. Anyuru was overjoyed, looking at the baby in Sujian's embrace, she leaned forward to tease her. It would be great if our child is as cute as this baby, Sujian. I'm sure it will be all the best soon. And Yiru brought Suji An good news. Suji was successfully captured by her. Suji An was elated, to the point that he found an Yaz who came back from work pleasing to his eye. His smile was especially bright during bedtime. He took the initiative to push an Yaz down on the bed and nibbled on that pleasing face. An Yaz was very cooperative during their break. He pushed against Suji An's forehead and asked with a smile, Why are you so enthusiastic today? Suji An bit his lip and replied with a smile as he panted, When I'm happy, I lust. 5. An Yai's laughed. Then he flipped over and pinned Suji An under him, pulling An Yai's shoulder. Suji An let An Yai's do the hard work of rubbing while he thought of a question, thinking about it. My brother and sister An wouldn't marry that quickly. How can I approach my parents? Ah. The hardworking person suddenly worked harder, Suji An couldn't help but let out a sound. Suji An looked up, only to see An Yaz's brows full of sweat, looking dissatisfied. An Yaz said, Jian Jian, you're not focusing. How am I not focusing? Suji An lowered his head to look at his lower half. I'm clearly very enthusiastic all right. The flowers occupying the courtyard are rarely swept to welcome any guest. But today, the door is open for you. 6. Go lighter. An Yai's lightly panted and laughed. Your students will cry. Su Jian continued as he panted. In front of my students, I've always been upright and dignified. And Yai's smiled and said, Oh, Su Jian hugged An Yai's neck and spoke into his ears softly while panting. I'm only indecent in front of you. Ah, say, did you grow recently? Why is it suddenly dot SSS? Is it uncomfortable? If I said it was. Would you stop? Dot no. Isn't that the answer? Come at me, my love. 7. Dot. Note. 1. Q. QQ is often used to describe noodles slash fish balls etc. for their chewy and springy texture. 2. Prolactin, a hormone which tells the body to make breast milk when one is pregnant or breastfeeding. 3. Bakai, cabbage, and cabbage. 4. And ran, this means safe, peaceful literally. 5. I. The I used here is usually used by royalties. 6. This is part of a poetry from the Tang Dynasty. It talks about how the courtyard was full of wildflowers and not cleared, implying that the place wasn't welcoming of any guest as they didn't bother cleaning the place up. It then says that the door is now open for you, you being someone the owner of the place was willing to open up his doors for due to how much he enjoyed his time with that person. In this context, Sujian was probably talking about his V. 7 My love, the term Sujian used here is usually used by the royalty's majesty slash prince to address their beloved. Side story 2. Visiting new in-laws, 2. Today, Sujian visited his old neighborhood again. Ever since he had a child, although he didn't have a sudden burst of motherly instincts like a woman, he definitely felt that he had changed. In the past, children were just the early stage of the human form to him and looked very cute. However, most of the time, brats made him very irritated, so he looked at children neutrally. He didn't hate them, but he also didn't particularly like them. However, ever since Suji An had his own baby, he felt wonderful thinking about how the baby had the same blood flowing in her as him. Describing the feeling, it would be, it seems that I have simultaneously grown strong and gained a weakness. Another change in him was his mentality towards his parents. Back then, there was no doubt he loved his parents. However, it was only after he had a child and became a parent himself that he truly understood how his parents felt. When he heard his parents' voice through the phone, there were many times Suji An wanted to tell the truth. But when he saw the cradle by his side, he held himself back ultimately. Suji An walked familiarly into the neighborhood. Very soon, he saw a familiar figure. There was a woman in front, 
heading home while carrying two large bags of vegetables. Who else could that be but his mother? Su Jian was excited. He quickly rushed forward and said, Auntie, let me help you carry. Mother Su was stunned as she looked at the woman who suddenly appeared. She said, No need. Su Jian had already taken the bag from her enthusiastically. Need. Auntie. Just let me do it. Mother Sue couldn't beat his stubbornness and could only let go. She said in gratitude, thank you very much. Su Jian helped Mother Sue carried her things to her house and Mother Sue invited him into the house for a drink. Naturally, Su Jian gladly accepted the invitation. However, as he saw the familiar furnishing in the house and felt the familiar atmosphere he hadn't experienced for so long, he couldn't help but felt teary. Here, have a drink. Mother Su poured a cup of water and passed it to Su Jian. Su Jian quickly received it with both hands. Holding the cup of water in his hands, Su Jian saw Mother Su looking at him carefully. His heart couldn't help but stiffen. He asked, What's wrong auntie? Mother Su said, I didn't notice this earlier. Now that I look at you closely, you seem familiar. Su Jian thought that it was normal if Mother Su found his face familiar since he appeared at his own funeral before. However, he didn't really want to mention the funeral as it would upset his mother. He was about to answer when he heard his mother ask, Girl, do you know Yang Shifen? Yang Shifen? Isn't that the name of Sister Su's mother? Su Jian nodded dazedly and replied, Yes, she is my mother. So you really are Shifen's daughter? Mother Su said in pleasant surprise, No wonder I found your face so familiar especially these two braids. It was the same as your mother back in those years. Su Jian looked down at his braids quietly. These braids were done by An Yiru. He felt that this hairstyle was pretty good, so he headed out with it. He didn't expect that it would become a tool for recognition. Sister Su's mother actually knew my mother. Su Jian was a little stupefied by this dramatic development. He asked, Auntie. You know my mother? I do. Your mother and I were good friends when we were students. Mother Su enthusiastically pulled Su Jian to sit down and continued, However, I think your mother married afterward and left the province. I didn't have any way to contact your mother. How is she now? Is her health okay? Su Jian didn't want to let his mother worry, so he answered vaguely, My mother is doing quite well. Auntie, you can rest assured. Mother Su looked at Su Jian and smiled while lamenting, You look a lot like your mother, especially that pair of round eyes. Since earlier, I felt that you look familiar, but I just couldn't remember. Oh right, girl, what's your name? Su Jian pursed his lips and said softly. Su Jian. Mother Su was stunned and her expression was a little downcast. Seeing Su Jian looking at her in concern, she lifted her mood slightly and explained. My eldest son also has the same name. However, he has already. Su Jian didn't want his mother to remember the sad memories, so he hurriedly said, that's amazing. Auntie, you were good friends with my mother in the past. Now, you and her child both have the same name. This is fate. Mother Sue's expression improved a little. She said, your mother liked to write stories back when we attended school. I remember now. In your mother's favorite story, the female lead was called Su Jian. I liked that story as well. We even joked around, saying that if we give birth to a girl, we will name her that. Su Jian felt a little resentful. Mother, were you treating me as a girl when you raised me? My younger son was named by his father. Unexpectedly, not only did we thought of the name together, even the surname was the same. Talking about it, it really is fate. Mother Su lamented with a smile, looking at Su Jian more gently and kindly. Indeed. Su Jian raised his hand, wanting to hug Mother Su. However, he paused and changed to hugging Mother Su's arm. He said warmly, this kind of fate is so rare, how can I not call you Godmother One? Previously, he had been trying to think of a reason to approach his parents. Unexpectedly, an excellent reason has appeared. He definitely needs to catch hold of this opportunity. Su Jian said enthusiastically, you and my mother are good friends, and I even have the same name as your child. Godmother, I hope you don't dislike me. Mother Su liked the idea as well. She laughed and said, how can I dislike you? As long as your mother agrees, I couldn't ask for more. Dot. Although Godmother felt more distant than Mother, Su Jian still felt happy with this sudden development. Mother Su looked happy as well, wanting Su Jian to stay for dinner. Naturally, 
Su Jian agreed happily. He cheerfully helped Mother Su with the cooking in the kitchen. Mother Su grew more fond of him seeing his skillful and neat movement when chopping the vegetables, giving him a round of compliments. Liking it, Su Jian said happily, then, let me cook for you next time. However, please cook today Godmother, I wish to taste your cooking. Mother Su laughed and said, what a sweet talker. How flattering. Having a daughter is the best. My two sons only know how to anger me. Uck. Su Jian felt very guilty. Although he knew how to cook, he had always stayed in his room to play back in the past, waiting for his mother to call him out to eat. Sometimes, he wouldn't move despite being called a few times, because he didn't want to hear his mother's nagging. He didn't talk to his mother often. Now that he thought about it, he felt very regretful. Thus, Su Jian tried his best to talk to Mother Su, picking words that Mother Su liked to hear to make her happy. While they were spending the time harmoniously, someone knocked on the door. Su Jian took the initiative as he said, Godmother, I will open the door. Su Jian reached the living room and opened the door. The next moment, both the person standing inside and outside were stunned. Su Ji looked up at his house number again. After checking that it was correct, he then looked at Su Jian in surprise again. Su Jian, why are you here? Because I'm your brother. Su Jian smiled brightly and said, Brother, you're back. Su Ji, after learning about what led to the current situation, Su Ji looked at Su Jian perplexedly and said, Who would have thought that our family would have such a relationship? Su Jian smiled and said, I find it miraculous too. Bro, after you and Xiaora get together, our relationship will become even more miraculous. After a while, Father Su returned home. Father Su, however, did remember Su Jian showing up at the funeral. After knowing that Su Jian had been involved in the same traffic accident as their son, the couple lamented and were downcast. Su Jian and Su Ji busily tried to comfort the two of them. Su Jian then said sincerely, Godfather and Godmother, I'm called Su Jian as well. I will take care of the two of you in Elder Brother's place from now on. Mother Su held Su Jian's hand and said with a happy smile, For some reason, I like this girl very much. Su Jian replied, Because I'm likable. Both Father Su and Mother Su started laughing. On the other hand, Su Ji stared at Su Jian and said with a smile, Indeed, you seem strangely familiar. Su Jian's heart stiffened but he appeared calm on the surface as he replied, that's probably because I'm especially approachable. Su Ji, when they were eating, Su Jian helped father and mother Su enthusiastically with getting the food. When he looked up, he realized that Su Ji was looking at him once again. Pausing for a moment, he helped Su Ji with the food as well. Su Ji looked at Su Jian helping his parents get their favorite foods. Then he looked at his own bowl and asked, how did you know that I like to eat chicken feet? Su Jian's hand paused for a moment. He smiled and said, I guessed it based on your appearance. Su Ji, as they were eating, Mother Su started asking about Sister Su's mother as well as Su Jian himself. Su Jian answered all of the questions obediently, feeling satisfied. Mother Su said with a laugh, speaking of which, back then, I joked with your mother saying that we gave birth to a girl and a boy, they would marry. Su Jian choked. He looked at Su Ji unconsciously, only to see that Su Ji was looking stunned as well. Fortunately, Mother Su started talking about something else and Su Jian breathed a sigh of relief. What the hell? Let's not mention that he was already married to Uncle An and had a baby. Even if he wasn't married, he wouldn't marry his brother. That would be like being struck by heavenly thunder for nine days. After the family finished eating, Mother Su started tidying the table. Su Jian volunteered enthusiastically to wash the dishes. Mother Su didn't allow him, but Su Jian kept wanting to wash the dishes. He said passionately, Godmother, just let me do it. I especially love to wash the dishes. If I don't, I will feel very uncomfortable. Mother Su replied, Even so, you can't. How can I let you wash the dishes? Xi Aoji, quickly go wash the dishes. Hearing this, Su Jian immediately let it go and said, All right, then I won't fight with Xi Aoji. Su Ji. After accompanying his parents to watch the TV for a while, his phone rang. Jian Jian, where are you now? Su Jian then realized that it was already late. He replied vaguely, I'm currently outside, I'll be back soon. Although he wanted to stay here, it was obviously not feasible. Therefore, 
After staying with his parents for a while more, Suji An had to leave reluctantly. Mother Su asked Suji to send him off, and Suji An didn't reject the idea. After they left the house, Suji An walked in front familiarly. At a certain crossroad, he took a shortcut habitually. Suji followed behind him and said, Suji An, you seem very familiar with our neighborhood. Suji An coughed lightly and thought of an excuse, not really. However, I did come for a house visit before, so I recognize the path. Pausing for a moment, he continued, Say, I've already called your parents Godfather and Godmother. You're only addressing me as Suji An? Suji was silent for a moment before he said, Sister? Suji An choked. I, I think you should continue calling me Suji An. After reaching the entrance of the neighborhood, Suji An suddenly remembered that there was a duck neck shop in front. Having a sudden craving for duck neck, he made a turn and head over to the shop. He said, I want to buy a duck neck first. Suji asked thoughtfully, how did you know that there was a duck neck shop in front? Suji An paused for a moment and said, I saw it when I came here previously. What about it? Dot nothing. Suji accompanied him as he bought a duck neck and even waited for a taxi with him. When Suji An boarded the taxi, Suji lowered his head by the taxi and said to him with a smile, when you reach home, remember to call or text me, sister. Suji An. Dot. When he entered the house, Suji An saw An Yais seated in the hall, reading some documents. Suji An spoke loudly towards him, saying, I am back. Looking around, he asked, Is the baby asleep? An Yais put down his documents and looked up. He said, Come here. Why? Suji An didn't stop moving as he said, I'll go take a look at the baby first. Pushing the door to the room open, he approached the cradle. After taking a good look at the baby sleeping soundly in the cradle, he lowered his head to kiss the baby. He then straightened his back in satisfaction. However, when he turned around, he fell into an embrace. An Yaz hugged him. Lowering his head, he kissed Suji An on their lips. Suji An hugged his waist and they had a deep kiss. Then, he leaned in a Yaz's embrace and sighed blissfully. Yaz, N, I'm very happy today. Oh, why? Uh, because I picked up five dollars when I went out today. Dot. Dot. When they went to bed, an Yaz suddenly asked, Where did you go just now? Is this the legendary act of investigation? Suji An smiled and said, What do you think? Of course, I went on a date with a handsome man and started a harem. An Yaz. Suji An raised his hand and touched an Yaz's face. He said, I, I couldn't help it. Who asked that guy to be more handsome, younger and softer than you? Tch. However, Suji An hugged an Yaz's neck and said, no matter what, my empress will always be you, my imperial consort. Even if I have an imperial harem of three thousand beauties, you will always be my favorite. Ah, empress and didn't say anything and silently started working. As for majesty Su, he was soon unable to bear it and pleaded for mercy. Yais, yais, don't. Incorrect. Ah, what's incorrect? Addressing. Hub hubby. Still incorrect. I don't know. Just who is the imperial consort? Dot. I was wrong your majesty. Please forgive me. There's no death penalty. But you can escape punishment. Dot. Dot. The next day, when a yais walked past the room, he realized that Su Jian was in the room squatting beside the cradle, whispering to the baby while rubbing his waist. My child, why don't we work together and dethrone your father, the despicable majesty? When that happens, you will be the queen while I become the queen mother and help you manage the state affairs. An uh, Yais. Note. One godmother, the godparents in Chinese culture is different from that in Christianity. In Chinese culture, Godparent act as a parent figure of the child if their relationships are close enough, though they don't necessarily raise the child. To become a godparent, there is some kind of ceremony and needs consent of involving parties. Side story 3, Visiting New In-Laws, 3. During his routine calls to his current mother, Su Jian mentioned that he got a godmother. After hearing about her good friend from the past, Mother Su current was very happy. Not only did she call Mother Su real, she also wanted to find a chance for them to meet up. She asked Su Jian to greet Mother Su real for her. Su Jian couldn't ask for more and gladly did so. With a valid excuse now, 
Sujian often visits his parents. The Su parents and Sujian became closer and they treated him like their daughter. Naturally, Sujian was happy with this outcome. The only thing that he was unsatisfied with was his brother's attitude. It's not like Suji was treating him badly. After all, every time they talked, Suji's expression or tone was like he was talking to someone close to himself. However, Sujian felt that his brother was often staring at him strangely. He always looked thoughtful. Sujian didn't know what he was thinking about. Today, when Sujian went to his parents' neighborhood again, he saw a familiar figure when he walked past the basketball court. Sujian didn't say anything, only looking interestingly at Suji playing basketball with a bunch of junior high school students. Seeing such an interesting sight, he couldn't help but felt like joining in too. Suji then spotted him, wiping off his sweat. He walked over. He asked with slightly raised brows. Do you know how to play basketball? Want to give it a try? Sujian didn't hesitate for long. Putting down the presents for his parents, he lifted his head and replied with a smile, Okay. After giving birth, Sujian had exercised quite a bit, so he was in decent physical condition. However, he didn't play basketball for a very long time. Additionally, there was a difference in height between his current body and his previous one. Thus, Sujian's movements were initially awkward. Fortunately, he had often played basketball with his brother in the past, so he was familiar with Suji's habit. Thus, they had a tacit understanding with one another. The longer they played, the better they cooperated with each other. They were ultimately able to achieve victory. After leaving the basketball court, Sujian sat his butt down on a bench. Suji saw him sitting on the chair with all of his limbs spread out, looking totally unappealing and couldn't help but purse his lips. He asked, I'll go buy a drink, what do you want? Sujian waved his hands lazily and said, Coke, thanks. Coke? Suji's had a perplexed expression. What's wrong? Sujian looked at him strangely and asked, isn't it normal to drink coke after playing basketball? Suji didn't say anything. He looked at Sujian deeply again before turning around and heading towards a nearby supermarket. With each person holding a can of coke, they sat next to each other on the bench. Sujian hooked onto the tab. However, he might have used too much strength and ended up breaking the tab instead, while the lid was still sealed. Sujian. Suji. Let me do it. After receiving the coke back from Suji. Sujian said embarrassingly, thank you. Then, he tilted his head and started drinking. He was extremely thirsty. Additionally, Suji was someone who he was very familiar with, so he held no reservation and drank as he pleased. Next to him, Suji was made speechless by Sujian's unruly and bold posture with coke leaking out from his mouth. Suji felt around in his pocket, but couldn't find any tissues. Thinking for a moment, he stretched out his hand. What? With puffed cheeks, Sujian looked at him. Your mouth is stained. Suji raised his hands to wipe it, but saw Sujian's behavior. However, he saw that Sujian was only stunned for a moment, before he raised his face. Without hiding, Sujian presented his chin willingly to Suji from him to wipe off the stain. Suji who thought the dignified, reserved and teenager looking lady before him would reject him. After finishing the coke, Sujian habitually threw the can at a nearby rubbish bin. His posture very serious. However, the can didn't give him face and landed on the ground with the dong. Failing to look cool, Sujian had no choice but to stand up embarrassingly and ran over. He picked up the can and threw it into the rubbish bin. Returning to the bench, Sujian saw Suji slightly laughing. Feeling unhappy, Sujian said, Why don't you give it a try? Suji raised his brows with a casual throw. The can landed nicely in the rubbish bin. Sujian. Suji felt that it was interesting looking at Sujian's dejected expression. Thinking for a moment, he randomly said, You're quite good at basketball. It's quite rare to see girls enjoy playing basketball. Sujian was silent for a moment before he quickly thought of an excuse. Because the person I like enjoys basketball. Suji was stunned. He asked, You have someone you like? Previously. Anyira had introduced Sujian as her friend, but she didn't mention that Sujian was actually her sister-in-law. Afterwards, when Sujian was drunk and an Yaz came to fetch him, Suji happened to be outside taking a call and missed the scene. When they finally met again, Sujian never brought up that he was married and even had a child. Thus, 
in Suji and the Sue parents' eyes, Su Jian had always been a young lady attending university. Su Jian nodded his head and thought in his heart, that's right, not only you brother, I, have someone I like, I even have a child. Aren't I fast, he he, Su Ji asked, what kind of person, is the person you like? Su Jian was stunned. He then said proudly, taller, richer and more handsome than you. Su Ji, Su Jian started feeling nosy, using his shoulder. He lightly bumped Suji and asked, Hey, do you have someone you like? Of course he knew that Suji and Anyiru are together. However, it doesn't seem like a good idea to be direct, so he acted like he didn't know. Suji nodded his head, Yes. Suji An's eyes shone brightly, Really? Talk about her. Seeing him excited, Suji felt a little helpless. He said, She is a very cute girl. Just like that, Suji An patted Suji's shoulder in disappointment and said, Bro, you can't be like this. Like what? Look at you. You can't even compliment your own girlfriend. How can this be? You should know that girls like listening to sweet nothings. You like it too? Suji An was excitedly giving guidance but was suddenly interrupted by Suji. He was stunned for a moment before he asked, What? Suji smiled and said, didn't you say that girls like listening to sweet nothings? Aren't you a girl? Do you like it too? Su Jian corrected his expression and said, Ah, of course I like it too. Su Ji asked, Which type do you like? Su Jian asked in confusion, Which type? Su Ji smiled and said, I will understand about it before I say it to her. Su Jian nodded his head and said, Oh, I understand. Su Ji asked, what are the things the person you like says that makes you happy? This. Su Jian thought with a tilted head. Memories of the things An Yaz had said before filled his mind. Jian Jian, I bought you three little bears. Never mind. Jian Jian, hand me the baby, I will coax her. Didn't you like this model a lot? I saw you looking at it online many times. Come, open the box and take a look. Actually, An Yaz didn't say many sweet nothings. However, the things he did and said inadvertently made Su Jian feel happy. Su Jian didn't know how to explain this well. Uh, Su Jian slowly said, Jian Jian perhaps. Jian Jian? Su Ji was stunned. You're happy with him just calling your name? Of course not. A few nights ago, Su Jian woke up in the middle of the night and heard Yaz calling Jian Jian gently in his sleep, before hugging Su Jian into a tighter embrace. Recalling this scene. Su Jian mood suddenly became better. He said, Yes, I feel very happy when the person I like calls my name. Just like that. Su Ji, seeing Su Ji look speechless and then start laughing, Su Jian asked in curiosity, Why are you laughing? Su Ji smiled and said, I'm just thinking that you must really like the person who calls you Jian Jian. If I don't like him, would I give birth for him? Su Jian felt so strongly and didn't hide it. Nodding his head, he said, that's right, I like him a lot. Suji stared at him and asked, I wonder when I can see him? Suji An hasn't really thought about An Yai's meeting his real parents. However, now that he had already got himself a godfather and godmother, it was only a matter of time before they met. Suji An replied, It should be soon. Dot. At home, he ate a hearty meal prepared by his mother. Then, he accompanied his parents for a chat, seeing that it was getting late. Su Jian bidded goodbye. Then, he was accompanied by Su Ji once again. Su Jian accepted the company very naturally and Su Ji didn't have any objections. However, when they were waiting for the taxi at the entrance of the neighborhood, a car suddenly rushed over. Su Jian was busily talking to Su Ji by his side and didn't notice. Su Ji, on the other hand, noticed. Widening his eyes in horror, Su Ji quickly pulled Su Jian to the side. Fortunately, the car passed by the two of them. Although shocked, they were fine. Hearing the car speeding past, Su Jian was shocked. When he came back to his senses, he realized that Su Ji was hugging him tightly in his embrace to protect him. Su Jian relaxed and also felt happy. He didn't raise his brother painstakingly for nothing. This is the result of his effort. Su Jian relaxed and leaned into Su Ji's embrace sighing in satisfaction. Suji lowered his eyes to look at the person he was hugging. He patted the person's back twice to calm her down, but he felt perplexed. On this side, the brothers were hugging while each in thought. However, they didn't realize a car was slowly stopping at the side of the road nearby. Sitting inside the car, 
An Yaz's expression was cold when he saw the two people hugging. Su Jian had mentioned to him before about his coincidental meeting with his mother's good friend as well as the fact that Su Jian had recognized the couple as godmother and godfather. An Yaz also knew that Su Jian had been visiting them frequently. This afternoon, Su Jian had called him saying that he will come here. After working a little overtime, An Yaz finished his and thought that Su Jian might still be there so he thought of picking Su Jian up on the way back. However, he didn't expect to see such a scene. He wasn't unaware that the two were hugging due to the urgency of the issue. However, the two had yet to separate even after the danger had passed. This inevitably made his expression sink. An Yaz opened the car door and stepped out of his car. Su Ji released Su Jian and was helping Su Jian arrange his disheveled hair when he heard a low male voice by the side, Jian Jian, Suji turned around, facing the indifferent and pressuring tall man, Suji brows raised slightly, Suji studied N Yaz unconsciously, seeing N Yaz's sudden appearance, Suji An asked in surprise, Yaz, why are you here, An Yaz hugged Suji An calmly and said, since I was passing by here, I came to fetch you, after saying so, he nodded towards Suji and continued, Thank you for saving Jian Jian earlier. I'm just doing what I should. Suji wasn't overwhelmed by An Yaz's imposing aura and was calm. Suddenly looking towards Su Jian, he asked, It's him? Su Jian understood that Suji was asking about the person I like that was previously mentioned. Nodding his head, Su Jian said, Yep, this is my husband. An Yaz, husband? Suji was stunned and found it a little hard to believe, he asked. You're married? Although Su Jian had long accepted the fact that he became a woman, he still felt embarrassed when his brother asked about him being married to a man. Just as he was about to answer, he heard Yaz say, Hello, I'm Jian Jian's legal husband. Su Ji welcomed his look. He said, Hello, I'm her brother, Su Ji. Su Jian looked at the both of them alternatingly. He felt awkward looking at the both of them who looked like two national leaders meeting. RG, um, since Yaz has come to fetch me, you can go back first. Suji nodded his head, not forgetting to remind Suji An in front of an Yaz, saying, Be more careful in the future. Dot. On their way back, Suji An asked an Yaz, Yaz, what do you think of Arji? An Yaz was silent for a moment before saying, Okay, okay. Suji An was a little disappointed. Now that brother Su and sister An were in love, he wished to bring the two of them together. However, the In family wasn't an ordinary family. The two of them had quite different family backgrounds. Although the In family hadn't cared about Su Jian's family background so far, that may not be the case for Sister An. The In family had more than one son, so it may not be much for An Yaz to marry a wife of ordinary background. However, An Yiru was the In family's only daughter. The In parents and brothers doted on her. It was hard to say whether they would like a marriage to his brother. Since An Yaz was his bedfellow, he must get an Yaz to stand on the same side as himself. Su Jian decided to let Uncle An know about his little brother's good points and help him gain some good impression. He asked, Don't you think that RG is very handsome? An Yaz who was currently driving couldn't help but turn around to look at Su Jian. Then, he looked back in front and said indifferently, I don't think so. You don't think so? Su Jian who had the same appearance genes as his little brother was unhappy. If An Yaz said that his little brother wasn't handsome, wasn't that saying the same for the previous him? He's obviously handsome. Su Jian continued unyieldingly. He also has a good temperament. Not to mention, he has a good character. You can tell in one glance that he is a good man worth committing to. The traveling car suddenly came to a stop. Su Jian who was speaking energetically asked in confusion, Why did you stop the car? An Yaz turned his head over and said, Come here. Su Jian moved over confusedly. What? An Yaz suddenly held Su Jian's face with both hands and bit his lips strongly. Then, as if nothing happened, he let Su Jian go and continue driving. SSSSSS. Su Jian held his mouth, looking flabbergasted. He asked, what are you doing? An Yaz looked forward expressionlessly and said, Hungry. Why would you bite me when you're hungry? Su Jian looked puzzled. However, he slowly came to a realization. An evil smile appeared on his face and he said, Hee hee, I understand now. An Yaz gave him a quick glance before looking forward again. He asked, 
what did you understand? Su Jian said a little excitedly, to be honest, I haven't tried it in the car before. Should we give it a try? He he he. The car stopped once again. An Yaz turned around and asked calmly, is that for it being stared straight at with his dark eyes? Su Jian gulped down his saliva and said, you, you couldn't possibly be thinking of doing it now. An Yaz removed his seatbelt and moved over. Looking at Su Jian at close proximity, he spoke with a deep and slightly hoarse voice, if I said yes, are you willing? The two of them were very close and they could feel each other's breath. An Yaz's voice that was so low as if it was the sound of breathing reached Su Jian's face head on. Su Jian felt his body heat up, stealing his heart. Su Jian hugged An Yaz's neck and threw himself into An Yaz's embrace. He said bravely, Come at me, hero. An Yaz, seeing that An Yaz was hugging him but not moving, Su Jian felt uncertain. Looking up from An Yaz's embrace, Su Jian was stunned. It was obviously a very intense moment. Why was An Yaz smiling so gently while hugging him? And what's with that look of relief and satisfaction? We have yet to start. Why was this fellow looking satisfied? Su Jian couldn't help but bit An Yaz's lower lip lightly. He asked, Hey, are you coming or not? An Yaz lowered his head to kiss him. He said with a smile, Let's not. I don't think we can finish this fast. The baby will cry if we take too long. Su Jian blinked his eyes and asked, There, let's send it quickly. An Yaz hugged Su Jian tightly into his embrace. He tilted his head and spoke into Su Jian's ear with a low and hoarse voice, That's impossible. Su Jian stiffened as the warm breath entered his ear. He felt his face heat up even more. He buried his face in An Yaz's bosom and groaned. Why is life so hard? An Yaz, side story 4, visiting new in-laws, 4. Ever since Su Jian was able to get closer to his parents, he had been in a good mood. Not only were his parents showering him with care, but even his younger brother who had been acting strangely initially was also now treating him warmly. His brother frequently called and would always rush home whenever Su Jian visited. Sometimes, he would even call Su Jian out to meet. The two of them would talk about their parents or Su Ji's girlfriend or other random stuff. They were very compatible. Su Jian felt that they were able to find back the tacit understanding they had before he was reborn, making him feel very happy. Since they had a legitimate reason, Su Jian and Su Ji's meetings weren't kept a secret from an Yai's. On one side, Su Jian had his true parents and brother. On the other side, he had the husband he loved and a baby. Su Jian felt that his life was very fulfilling. Thus, Su Jian who was immersed in his fulfilling life didn't notice An Yaz looking at him with dark eyes when he was chatting with Su Ji on the phone. Recently, Su Jian who rarely compliment men have been complimenting about Su Ji before him. Thinking about this, An Yaz couldn't help but knit his brows. Also, when An Yaz coincidentally heard An Yiru, who came home during the holidays, saying to Su Jian, no wonder Aji would sometimes ask about you. Third sister-in-law is actually his sister. An Yaz's mood sank further. Yet, Su Jian didn't notice An Yaz's abnormality. These few days, after getting off work, An Yaz mostly hugged the baby in silence or was working silently in the study room. Seeing this, Su Jian only thought that An Yaz was tired. Thus, he personally cooked a meal for An Yaz, feeling that he was quite thoughtful. He gave himself a thumbs up. Dot. This night, Su Jian was lying on the sofa while playing his phone when his phone rang. Answering the call, he had yet to speak when he heard An Yiru speaking anxiously, third sister-in-law, is third brother at home? Su Jian answered a little confusedly, yes, I can help you call him, okay. An Yiru relaxed slightly, with a still anxious tone, she continued, I called earlier but I couldn't get through. Third sister-in-law, please hurry up. I'm looking for him urgently. His phone might have run out of battery. Don't be anxious Xiaoru. What's going on? Third sister-in-law, something happened to Aji. Su Jian's expression stiffened and he asked anxiously, what happened to Aji? Sounding like she was crying, An Yiru said, there was a mudslide. A lot of people died. I called Aji but there was no answer. Third sister-in-law, I'm afraid that Aji. Dot. Su Jian then remembered Su Ji mentioning that he would be going to a mountain area for some social activities. Recalling the location Su Ji told him, Su Jian looked it up online immediately. Indeed, 
that area had a sudden rainstorm which caused the mudslide, killing many people. Su Jian's heart sank. Quickly calling back home, he learned that Su Ji has yet to return home. Su Jian's heart sank further. Fortunately, his parents only knew that Su Ji was out for some activity but didn't know where he had gone to. Su Jian relaxed slightly, running into the study room. Su Jian handed the phone to An Yai's. Due to the sudden news, his voice was trembling when he said, Xiao Ru called. An Yai's looked at him calmly and received the phone. With a steady voice, he said, Xiao Ru, perhaps due to anxiousness, An Yiru's voice in the phone was very loud. Su Jian heard An Yiru crying with a what? Then her pleading An Yai's to help her find life saving helicopter, saying that she wanted to personally go help with the rescue. An Yai's listened calmly throughout before saying in a low voice, You can't. Su Jian stood by the side and listened to their conversation. After An Yai's hung up the phone, he tried his best to say calmly, Xiao Ru can't go for sure. She's a girl and still young. It's understandable that she being rash due to anxiousness. An Yai's looked at him for a moment. Finally, he couldn't help it and raised his hand to touch Su Jian's pale white face. Feeling the coldness, he asked with knitted brows, What's wrong? Su Jian trembled slightly. Holding an Yai's hand, Su Jian looked at him. He asked, somewhat imploringly, Yai's, you can help, can't you? Why don't you let me go? You can't. An Yai's said without hesitation. Su Jian trembled. Without saying anything, he lowered his head silently and turned around to leave. An Yai's grabbed onto him and forcibly spun his body around. The moment he saw Su Jian's red eyes, an Yaz's heart clenched. However, he tried his best to speak gently. We have a helicopter and it's easy to find personnel. However, there is still air traffic control and other matters to worry about. Seeing Su Jian looking at him expectantly, he paused for a moment. Caressing the corner of Su Jian's eyes, he continued, I will think of a way. Yaz, thank you. Seeing Su Jian's happy expression, An Yaz didn't feel happy at all. Instead, his eyes darkened. Dot. Although An Yai's forced Su Jian to stay in bed and sleep, he was too worried about Su Ji. Additionally, An Yai's stayed in the study room the whole night to settle the issue and didn't come back, making Su Jian feel cold in bed. Thus, Su Jian didn't sleep for the whole night and only managed to get a moment of sleep the next moment. Opening his eyes, Su Jian saw An Yai's sitting by the bed. Because of the backlighting, he couldn't see An Yai's clearly. He only felt that An Yai's had a rare tired look. Yai's. Su Jian rubbed his eyes. Suddenly awake, he asked, is the news about Arji? How is he? An Yai's looked at him deeply and replied, we managed to contact him. He is fine and can return home soon. Su Jian was in a daze. Then, his body relaxed and he lied back down. His limbs all spread out on the bed. He said, that's great. Fortunately, RG is fine. If not, I wouldn't know what to do. His family had already lost their eldest son due to a traffic accident. If their youngest son were to meet an accident as well, his parents would not be able to handle it. He only cared about being happy and wanted to roll around the bed. The next moment, he suddenly jumped out of the bed and personally gave Suji a call. After experiencing a period of anxiety, Su Jian's brotherly love grew. During the call, Su Jian asked about what happened and nagged at Su Ji to be careful a thousand times. Su Ji who was receiving the call was not annoyed at all and even comforted Su Jian from time to time. His voice soft and gentle. Su Jian was already very happy that his brother was no longer in danger, but felt prouder when his brother was being this obedient. He chatted with Su Ji on the phone for a very long time and his face carried a foolish smile without him knowing. As for an Yaz by the side, he could see the happiness in Su Jian's smile. Su Ji who was speaking in the phone also sounded overwhelmingly gentle. However, Su Jian didn't notice Tan Yaz's expression at all. After the exhibition of brotherly love was over, he hung up the phone and laid down on the bed and said pleasantly, Life sure is beautiful cough. An Yaz noticed his coughing immediately. Did you catch a cold? Su Jian laughed with a hee hee and got up, saying, It's nothing just coughing for a moment. I'm now very happy, optimistic and open-minded. I feel very refreshed. Dot. However, he spoke too soon. Cough, runny nose, 
headache and fever. The symptoms of a bad cold assaulted Su Jian and he lost his previous energy. Seeing an Yai's bending over with furrowed brows to check on his condition, Su Jian lifted his hand powerlessly to push him away, saying, don't come over or you will catch a cold too. An Yai's motion came to a halt. Su Jian didn't notice it and continued. It would be bad if it spread to the baby. An Yaz didn't reply, only holding on to Su Jian's hand. However, for the whole period Su Jian was sick, An Yaz still took care of him, because he was worried of affecting the baby. An Yaz purposely didn't approach the baby, his cohabitant was being so caring. By right, Su Jian should be feeling very happy. However, Su Jian didn't felt particularly comfortable. He realized that an Yaz was a little strange. Su Jian couldn't really tell which part was strange. An Yaz still treated him well but he seemed somewhat quiet. However, an Yaz had always been a man of few words, so it wasn't particularly noteworthy now. Nevertheless, Su Jian still felt that an Yaz was acting strangely. If he had to find a word to describe, it would be cold? Su Jian felt that although An Yaz always had a poker face, his attitude had been cold recently. Su Jian counted with his fingers. That fellow kissed the baby every day. However, he hasn't kissed me for a few days. He didn't need An Yaz to be all mushy with him. However, for someone who kissed him every day with a poker face to suddenly stop being close to him is very suspicious. After being forced by mother and to accompany her to watch a few melodramatic marriage drama, Su Jian couldn't help but think, don't tell me, An Yaz is having an affair. It was very suspicious after An Yaz suddenly told Su Jian he needed to go overseas for a business trip. Su Jian asked in surprise, didn't you say that it was Ming Fai that is going? He remembered when Jim Ming Fai came to see the baby previously, he mentioned he would bring back souvenirs for the baby. An Yaz's expression didn't change as he replied, there's a change in plan. I will go over personally. Oh. Su Jian asked dazedly, how long will this take? An Yaz gave him a glance and said, half a month. Pausing for a moment, he explained, it's a very big project. Half a month? Su Jian thought back. For the time he had been with An Yaz, An Yaz had rarely gone on business trips. Even the longest trip didn't exceed five days. Unexpectedly, the trip this time was so long. Su Jian said jokingly, so long, the baby may just forget about you when you come back. An Yaz stared at him and said, as long as you still remember me. Su Jian smirked, you won't know about that. Maybe by the time you're back. I already have someone else. Let me tell you, I'm very popular these days. A few days ago, when I went to a mall, I met a guy who asked from my number. He even said little sister, let's be friends. Ha ha ha, this is such an old method of striking a conversation. I haven't used it since ages ago. An Yaz's mood sank and he turned around abruptly. Su Jian shut his mouth awkwardly. Looking at An Yaz's back. He held his chin and thought, he's not even willing to joke with me. Don't tell me there's really something going on, dot. This suspicion worsened after An Yaz went on the trip. Although An Yaz was overseas, he would call back every day. However, An Yaz didn't call Su Jian, but called home instead. There had been a few times when Su Jian heard the housekeeper talking to An Yaz about the baby, but never once was Su Jian mentioned. The reason why the housekeeper didn't answer about Su Jian was naturally because An Yaz didn't ask about him. Initially, Su Jian didn't give it much thought. After all, An Yaz went overseas for a business trip, not for a holiday. It was possible that he was too busy to ask about the others. However, the housekeeper had answered for the baby, for mother An and even once for An Yiru. Su Jian started feeling unhappy. He wasn't like many wives who thought that it was normal for their husband to report about their whereabouts every day. However, he remembered N Yaz's indifferent behavior before he left for the trip. Other than the incident with Jian before they had fallen in love with each other, it never happened again. And after the two of them started loving each other, An Yaz would call back even when he was going to be just a few minutes late getting back. Fearing that Su Jian would worry. This is the first time such a situation was occurring even since the two of them started loving each other. As the saying goes, feelings start to fade after seven years. Their marriage was still far from being seven years long. It couldn't be his feelings were already fading? 1. To be honest, 
Tzu Jian didn't truly believe that Tan Yaz was having an adultery. This faith didn't come from some female intuition like other wives. He just believes in him. The uncle and he knew wasn't someone who would have an adultery. If he wasn't having an adultery, then just what was going on? Su Jian tried his best to think back whether have he done something unintentionally which angered an Yaz. However, he just couldn't think of anything. He had been respectful and loving to his parents friendly to his brother, very loving to his husband and doted on his child. He was practically a role model wife and mother. Also, his character was as kind, honest, smart, witty, hardworking, brave, serious and lively as before. He couldn't think of a reason why Uncle An would dislike him. Leaning over the cradle, Su Jian sighed in annoyance, baby. Do you know what is going on with your daddy recently? It seems too early to be menopause. Note. 1 The Seven Year Itch, Side Story, Visiting New In-Laws, 5 Today, Su Jian was once again dragged by mother and to watch melodramatic marriage dramas together. Su Jian had always been a good audience when he watched the TV with mother and although he was cursing like there was no tomorrow internally, he looked very serious on the outside. On the contrary, mother An was very engrossed in the show and always voiced her comments to Su Jian. In today's episode, the slag man had a mistress and the mistress showed up at their home to bully his original wife. Not only did not slag man not help, he even helped the mistress insult his original wife. The ending song signifying the end of the episode sounded. Mother and expressed indignantly, why is the man like that? That's so detestable. Han Yan is so pitiful. Su Jian said, actually, it's Han Yan who is weak. How is it Han Yan's fault? Mother and immediately rebuked. Han Yan is kind-hearted. It's the man who is bad. Han Yan is such a good girl, yet he didn't know how to cherish her. That mistress is so ugly and vulgar, how can she compare to Han Yan? Actually, the actress starring as the mistress was quite seductive in real life. The male and female senses of aesthetic are quite different. Ahem. Looking at the still angry mother and Su Jian suddenly said, Mother, if Yaz had someone outside, Mother An's brows scrunched up immediately and she exclaimed, What are you saying? How could Xiaz be such a person? How can you doubt him? Number. Su Jian explained, What I mean is Yaz is so outstanding. It can't be helped that there would be many women trying to seduce him. Being such a kind person, Yaz might be tricked if he meets an expert seducer. Su Jian said euphemistically, if Yaz brought home another woman one day, Mother you don't have to stare at me, I'm just saying if, Mother, if such a thing happened, what would you do? Me? That's right. Su Jian's imagination started becoming vivid. He said, for example, one day, where outside was cold and cold wind filled the place, and Yaz comes home looking dignified. However, a pure and enchanting woman was by his side. Why is she pure and enchanting? Mother and suddenly interrupted. Su Jian replied blankly, because men are more fond of this type of girl. Are you talking about yourself? said Mother and Su Jian. Mother and asked, What's wrong? Nothing. Su Jian perked up and continued. In this example, An Yaz brought a beautiful woman back home and said to his kind and gentle wife that he fell for another woman and asked for a divorce. The mistress then stepped forward proudly and insulted the wife, saying that the wife was not worthy to be in Yaz's wife. Mother and interrupted him again, saying, it goes without saying that you are not worthy to be Xiao's wife. Dot mother, could you please not interrupt me? Su Jian continued helplessly, I'll continue from where I left off. The woman said arrogantly that she is the woman that can stand shoulder by shoulder with him while An Yaz hugged the mistress intimately by the side. Not only did he not help, he looked at his wife as if looking at a stranger. Thus, the wife could only leave tragically with no one helping her. In the cold weather, she hugged the baby and left her home, struggling against the cold wind. How can that be? Mother An was instantly angry. Su Jian's heart felt warm, although Mother is always fierce, she still holds some feelings for me. Mother An continued, you can leave yourself. The baby belongs to the An family, how could you bring her away? Su Jian. Su Jian lost the interest to continue. However, Mother An was now interested, she said unhappily, and, did you think that Arxias will fall for just anyone? He was already blind once for falling in love with you. How could he be blind a second time? Even if he is blind a second time, 
How could I let him be blind a second time? Su Jian slowly came to an understanding and asked with smiling eyes, Mother, what do you mean? With a haughty look, Mother and looked at him in disdain and said, Did you think that it is so easy to enter the in family? To add on, would you really leave when the mistress asked you to? Since when were you so obedient? If you dare to leave, I will break your leg. Su Jian's smile became wider. Mother and asked unhappily, why are you smiling? Su Jian said with a smile, I understand. Mother, you can't bear to let me go can you? I can't bear to. H M P H. Mother and continued while looking awkward, you are so stupid. I've trained you so painstakingly to make you finally presentable. If you left, wouldn't I be making a loss? Additionally, Ran Ran still doesn't have a younger brother or sister. I don't care whether you leave or not. Leave Ran Ran with a brother and sister before you think about that. Su Jian. Dot. Su Jian was absent minded as he let the baby play with his finger. It had already been six days. An Yaz had yet to contact him. Actually, Su Jian had considered whether he should take the initiative to call Yaz and ask what was going on. However, he felt a bit awkward to do so. What if An Yaz was busy with work and didn't have the time? Wouldn't it be petty of him to be asking? Also, he felt bitter. Fine, since you don't want to contact me, then we won't be in contact. We will see who gives up first. However, Su Jian soon gave up. He admitted that he missed Uncle An. Anyway, the two of them are husband and wife, he didn't need to be so fussy. Although it was a little embarrassing, it's a fact that he missed An Yai's. It doesn't matter if An Yai's gloats about the fact that Su Jian admitting that he missed An Yai's, because that's his Yai's. After thinking through, Su Jian started calling an Yai's. Listening to the beeping sound of the phone as he dialed, Su Jian felt nervous. He suddenly missed an Yai's voice very much. Hello. Su Jian was stunned. Why? Why was it the voice of an unknown woman? Su Jian asked blankly, I'm looking for an Yai's. Excuse me, who are you? Sorry, Yai's is currently taking a bath. Why don't you call back later? Oh, okay, okay. Su Jian stammered and hung up the phone immediately after he spoke. Then, he sat at the sofa quietly in a daze. Woman, bath. Is it going to happen to him now? Dot. Su Jian didn't call back again. He held his phone and slept. When he woke up the next day, the first thing he did was check his phone. However, the contact log showed that An Yai's never called back. Su Jian suddenly felt very tired as he covered his eyes with the back of his hand. Thus, when his colleague invited him to a gathering today, not only did Su Jian go, he even drank a lot. Seeing him drunk and remembering that his husband was out of the country for a business trip, they called the contact number which said brother after looking through his contact list. After a while, Su Ji rushed over. Su Jian stared at him blankly and said, Arji, it's me. Su Ji held on to him and let Su Jian lean on his body, asking, how do you feel? Is it uncomfortable? My heart feels like it has been stabbed by a knife and pierced by thousands of arrows. Dot I'm talking about your body. I'm tired physically and mentally, feeling like there is no more meaning in life. Dot. Dot. Suji had wanted to send Suji Ann back to the Ann family home. However, he didn't expect Suji Ann to struggle in objection the moment he mentioned it. Suji studied Suji Ann by hugging him. He asked, What's wrong? Did you fight with brother-in-law? Su Jian murmured, Your brother-in-law is going to marry a mistress. Su Ji's eyes sank, but his voice became gentler as he said, What mistress? Your brother-in-law went to the city to take the imperial examinations and got first place, so he wants to marry the prime minister's daughter and abandon his wife back home. That's not right. I should at least be rice. Su Jian spoke as if singing a musical phrase as he bitterly attacked the heartbreaker. 1. Suji. After hesitating for a moment, Suji ultimately decided to bring Suji An back to Su home, letting Mother Su clean up Suji An. Suji picked up Suji An's phone and prepared to make a call. Initially, he had wanted to call An Yai's. However, when he recalled Suji An's attitude towards An Yai's, he hesitated. While he was hesitating, Suji An's phone rang. Suji paused for a moment before he answered. It was the housekeeper of the An family who called. Hearing Suji's voice, the other side seemed to be stunned for a moment before he politely asked about Suji An. Suji replied, She is drunk. She will be staying at my place tonight and not going back. 
The housekeeper said, I will send someone over now to pick third mistress up. No need. Suji continued indifferently. She said she doesn't want to go home, housekeeper, but Suji said, please don't worry, I will take good care of her. After saying so, he hung up the phone. Dot. On the other side, the housekeeper held the phone which was hung up upon, stunned. After hesitating for a moment, he called an Yais over the phone. An Yais who learned that Suji An is drunk, staying with Suji and not returning home didn't say anything. Third young master? The housekeeper lightly called. An Yais's emotion couldn't be felt from the voice over the phone as he said, understood. Dot. After Mother Su wiped Suji An's face, she helped him change into sleepwear. Throughout the entire process, Suji An was obedient and stared blankly at Mother Su. Mother Su, who always wanted an obedient daughter, felt her heart melt at the sight. Thus, she decided to chase Father Su out of the room and let Suji An sleep with her. However, Suji An wasn't willing. He moved automatically to his own room and lied on his own bed. Although their eldest son had already passed away, Mother Su still cleaned his room every day. Hence, Su Jian's room was still very clean and neat. Mother Su was hesitant. Seeing Su Jian wanting to sleep on his brother's bed, Su Ji looked down and thought for a moment before persuading Mother Su to go along with Su Jian's wish. Mother Su agreed. When father and Mother Su went back to their room from the living room to sleep, Su Ji pushed the door leading to Su Jian's room from the living room. However, he was stunned when he went in. That person was lying down on the bed obediently just a moment earlier. Why was he suddenly under the bed now? Suji held his forehead as he looked at Suji who was crawling under the bed with his butt up. What are you doing? Suji squat down and asked. Suji and Duggan Duggan finally managed to dig out his treasure box from underneath the bed. Then, he sat down on the floor while leaning against the bed and opened the treasure box in a cherishing manner. Sling a toy train and a transformers sticker. The box was filled to the brim with many tattered items. Suji An searched the box and found a tattered notebook and pencil. Using the pencil, he wrote a few words in the notebook seriously, An Yais you. Based on this, the two of them probably had a fight. Or else, why would she not forget to curse the other even when she was drunk? However, Suji glanced at the person beside him whose eyebrows were flickering. He was curious about what she would write next. An uh, Yais you asshole, an uh, Yais you heartbreaker, an uh, Yais you should die, or maybe something like what the fat auntie below would say, an uh, Yais you should be chopped up, get as far away as possible from me. However, Suji An didn't notice him at all. Using a clumsy posture like a primary school student, he held the short pencil and continued writing sincerely. Are a bad guy. An uh, Yais, you are a bad guy. Dot. Suji looked at the words written on the book silently and then, he silently looked at the person beside him who had a strict and serious face. Then, he burst into laughter. Suji An looked at him slowly before turning back around to continue writing seriously. His pencil didn't stop, but he didn't continue writing words. Instead, he drew a fat pig head beside the words. He also especially drew a narrow between the words and Yaz and the pig head. Suji. After he finished writing, Suji An seemed to feel satisfied. He kept the notebook and closed the box. Then, he hid the treasure box in a cherishing manner under the bed before climbing back up onto the bed. On the other hand, Suji who was sitting beside the bed asked, how did you know that there was a box under the bed? Suji An didn't answer for a moment. Just when Suji thought he has fallen asleep, he suddenly spoke. I'm the one who placed it there. Of course I know. Note, one Suji An is speaking historically here. In ancient China, the people aiming to be scholars would need to pass many examinations. The examinations occur once every three years. Since transportation wasn't advanced back then, it takes a long time to travel. Suji An mentioned that an Yaz was abandoning the wife back home. The word used to write wife here is special as it means a wife which shared a lot of hardship with her husband. At the same time, the word also means chaff, a cheap food consumed by poor people to fill their hunger. Suji An then proceed on to saying that he should at least be rice, since rice is more expensive and better than chaff.